catch them all <laughs> All right, so in today's video, I'm going to be taking a look at an OBD2 uh, code reader. And this is the actual unit here. It has a pretty decent amount of cable, so you can probably comfortably sit in the passenger seat. And, of course, this is the OBD2 uh, connection, the interface there. You have the unit, which requires no batteries, which is very nice, of course. You have a USB port on the bottom, and they do supply a cable to go with this. That is so that you can update this. The only you know, problem that comes with that is it's designed to be used on Windows, so people using Linux or Macs may run into some issues. Um, so, you know, there's that. But you have free updates for life. So that's good. You also have a 2.8 inch color screen, which is nice. And then these rubber buttons, which actually have a very definitive click, which is really good. You can actually tell when you've actually clicked it. And you have the ability, of course, to look up the codes. And you also have uh, IM readiness, which is inspection and maintenance readiness check. So if you're going to get your car inspected, of course, this will kind of give you an idea of what's going on before you go to do that. You can address any problems. And obviously, if you're doing a uh, scan for any actual error codes, it's going to let you read those and erase those. So I want to try this out because I actually have a code on the car. I don't know why at the moment. I suspect I know why because of the modifications to the car, but I don't know for certain. And it pops up every so often and we're going to check that out. But before we do that real quick, as I mentioned before, you have the USB cable. You have this little cap which just covers and protects the actual pins for the actual port. So that just goes on like that and it kind of falls, it won't fall off, but it doesn't like lock into place. So once you put that on there, just make sure whenever you put this away that you keep uh, an eye on that or put it back into the container that it comes in. This is what the container looks like that it comes in. So included with it, you also get a kind of a quick start guide right here, which actually is pretty good as far as uh, documentation. It's actually really easy to read. And then you get an actual user manual which will give you quite a bit of information as well and they actually have uh, the website and everything on the back here so you can go on there like I say get the updates and everything which is really nice and other than that I wanted to start out here because we're going to be shooting outside obviously the car and it's going to be probably some awkward angles with the camera trying to get it set up so that you can see what I'm doing because I want to show you as I go through maybe you can read the codes and and see the uh, process and, and we're going to learn together because this is a new item for me so we're just going to be testing it out so sort of a, a unboxing testing demonstration and a little bit of a review uh, as far as how well it works for my specific issue with my specific uh, vehicle at the moment and there's probably going to be a lot of traffic or some traffic at least so hopefully the audio will be suitable you'll be able to understand and hear everything and see everything so with the camera angles and the noise I just wanted to kind of preface this so that I can show you what we're working with uh, beforehand and other than that let's go out to the car and see what we can do about clearing this code or find out what the code is and then clearing the code depending upon the problem and we'll go from there okay let's head to the car all right, so I'm obviously in the car right now. I've got the camera set up. Hopefully, um, I'll be able to hold this kind of like this so you can kind of get a little bit of an idea of what to see and I can hopefully still see it as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in. Start the car up. So you can see it's lit up now and we have diagnose and settings. I don't really need to go into settings, but if I go over with the toggle keys, hit the OK button, I can go through and set that up. It's already set up how I like, so I'm going to back out using the back arrow. We'll go to diagnose, and you may be able to hear the car stuttering just a little bit, so I don't know if you'll pick that up or not. All right, so right now it says monitor status. 
I don't know how well that shows up for you, but you can see that it's red, uh, different aspects of the vehicle, and it's got uh, two DTCs in, so there's actually two errors available at least. Um, if I hit OK, I can go to read codes. So I'm going to go to read codes, and it says this vehicle's code is defined by the manufacturer. Please enter to select the manufacturer. This car is problematic because it's a Fiat, it's an, it's an Abar, and it's modified, so it's problematic in the modifications and because of the type of vehicle it is at times for some readers. So this one, it may or may not be able to read. Um, I've got to locate and see if uh, Fiat's in the menu. It's got Opal and some other sort of obscure options, so that's good. Centron, Daewoo, Dahatsu, there's Fiat. So, all right, let's hit that. And it says uh, the fault code is not found in the database, but it does give me the error code uh, P1065, so I can go ahead and look that up. Uh, some of the codes are going to be stored on the onboard computer. I have not updated this. I will update it later, but I wanted to go ahead and just try it out straight out of the box and see what the results were. And I'm going to try to update it and see what the results come up with. But I know that it is P1065, and it's showing there's a few different ones. If I hit this, uh, P1061, same error same error same error same error so I have multiple I have two errors but they're multiple times so that's good I mean I don't have to worry about you know what it is alright so I've got read codes erase codes I am readiness and data stream so let's go down to data stream hit OK uh, we're gonna instead of select we're gonna just uh, view the graph and see if it shows us anything So, yeah, so we have a real-time graph, uh, graph, not graph, but we have a real-time graph, which allows us to view some of the status, which is pretty cool to have that option. Obviously, for different cars, uh, I'm sure there's going to be different support as far as that aspect goes. I don't know how well it shows up for you, but hopefully you can see that. So we can actually go through and select things if we're looking for certain aspects, so that's pretty cool. I just kind of did view just so we can see what it looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and back out of this, back out of that. I'm going to go to Erase Codes. Well, actually, I'm going to go to I Am Readiness and hit that. Uh, we're just going to do this drive cycle. And some of it's going to be available. Some says OK. So it just varies depending upon what's supported, I guess, by this scanner to this vehicle. If we go since DTCS cleared, it says OK, and it tells us there's multiple pages, so we can keep scanning down. So that's pretty cool. So we're back out of that. Uh, let's go to Erase Codes and hit OK and Clear re Reset. All right, so let's actually shut this down and just leave it in the on position. And we're going to Clear Reset, OK, or Back, and we're going to hit OK. Please turn the ignition on with the engine off. Please enter. Okay, yeah, so I just did that already, but it's prompting you, which is nice because if you didn't know to do that, at least you would know to do that with this. So I just kind of uh, jumped ahead of the scanner a little bit. So we hit OK. It's processing. And it says it's connected to the DLC. If the initiative is on, verify that the vehicle is OBD2 compliant. Right. So I'm just going to go back through and see. I'm entering the system now by rescanning. Again, I don't know how well you can see this. I hope that you can, but I need to be able to see it as well. And you know, it's small, and even with my eyesight issues, I can see it fairly well. But I don't know how well it's showing up for you. So I'm kind of trying to give you an idea of what's going on. So it's basically just processing again, reading the system. And it says, 
communication error. It's connected. If the ignition is on, verify that the vehicle is OBD2 compliant. Okay, so we'll just back out. Let's crank it back up. All right, we're on diagnose again, so let's hit OK. I'll let it read again. I'm not sure it's going to clear because, again, like I said, this car is not always supported. Now, I told it to reset. Obviously, a moment ago, as you saw, it didn't do that. Please turn the ignition on with the engine off. Press enter key to continue, which is going to be the OK key. So this time, we'll do that. Hit OK. Processing. And we'll see if it has an error or not. Erase codes. Clear reset. Emission related diagnostic information. Failure. Please confirm and turn the ignition on with engine off. Hit OK. We'll see what happens once I update it and see how easy that is. And uh, we'll go from there. All right, so a quick update. I was able to clear the codes. I took the reader and hooked it up to one of my laptops and did the updates. And after the updates, I was able to erase the codes perfectly fine. So that is a update to that. Another thing I want to show you real quickly, if I can get this to sit. Uh, the cool thing about this uh, system is you can actually go in and with mine I have to specify the vehicle but you can see the different codes and if you wanted to you can actually look up these codes with the onboard uh, computer here which is kind of cool So, there's the settings you can change, language, unit of measure, the beep, so if you want to hear it beep or not, but um, you go in to data stream, you can view the data, so I didn't get to show you that really good earlier, so you can select the different data streams you want to view, which is pretty cool. And depending upon the vehicle, I guess, what is and what isn't supported. Um, you have the IM readiness, which is the inspection and maintenance readiness. So that will show you if you have any issues going on. So that's a pretty cool option. And then you got tool information so you can see the different information about the unit and it did update so that's pretty cool and then the data stream so yeah I just wanted to give you a quick overview so super easy to use it actually worked with my car which is surprising uh, didn't work until after the update so when you get this go ahead and hook up through this USB port on the bottom and of course as I stated previously it's for Windows only that you can um, use the updating tool but it's pretty easy uh, the website looks like it's a little bit changed from what it says in the instructions but you can find it and update it and then it works and you know batteries you just plug it in you're ready to go so that's pretty much it I just wanted to share that with you uh, really quickly and I'll leave a link below if you want to check out more about this tool but super easy to use actually pretty easy for me to read which is usually not the case so overall very very pleased and very uh, excited to have a tool that actually works with my car for a change so that's it. Thanks for watching, and again, check out the link below.